Okay, so today what I want to do is to look at and slightly rework and simplify the resource uh, system. More specifically, how resources and resource create info uh, interact. Now, when I, first, when I created, when I implemented resources, the idea was that a resource would be immutable. Once you loaded the resource, that was it. It was loaded. It was either loaded or unloaded or otherwise failed to load. And that's going to have to change now. As because as part of the uh, work on the render, the rendering system, I came upon the realization that there are certain types of resources where that just plain old isn't going to work. Where, for example, for images, for rendering or models, you have a uh, level of detail. So for an image, you have different mid-map levels. And you may, when you load a resource, you don't want, when you load an image, you don't want to necessarily have to have all the levels of the image, all the detail levels up to like, you know, 1K, 2K, 4K resolution pictures or like all the highest level details of a model to be loaded immediately. You may want to have like, you know, the resource, the image, the model may be really far away. So you only need or want to load in some very low level, like, you know, the 32 by 32 pixel version of the image or the very low level, low polygon count version of the model, because it's so far away, you don't actually need that higher level of detail. So that's going to require a bit of a, uh, a difference for resources, where when I talk about the resource being immutable, that means like the definition of the resource once loaded is mutable. Now that may still may mean that there's a uh, certain types of resources that, you know, it's a very simple on off, for example, like a shader type or a vertex descriptor, those will still have to be like, you know, once they're loaded, they're loaded. Otherwise, for those other systems, they're going to require like some kind of sub resource loading thing, which is a very specific type of loading, which is going to be uh, a function or a, a very type specific set of loading and unloading. So the, for the most part, they'll still use this. However, as part of that, create info was added to the resource implementation here, which I required under the assumption that when during the development, during the, yeah, during development, you would have to make modifications to resource create infos to be able to like, you know, to initially create and modify to, f to reach what the, what, the, what the resource will eventually be. After which, once you've exported it, then during the runtime, the, you know, the actual production runtime environment, the engine would ha then have an immutable, a set immutable create info which be which would have a simplified uh environment uh method for loading however again back for the development uh the, you know these could get out of sync you could have the loaded create info and then you modify it and then it has a different one that the understanding of how that works should not be part of resource itself rather it should be part of the uh environment outside, you know, systems outside of the resource that have knowledge of both resources and resource create info. Therefore, what I want to do today is to remove create info from being directly not handled. It'll have to be handled somewhere in the functions, especially during the loading, but I don't want it to be part of the actual like this here. So that'll simplify, you know, you don't have to have the create info. You don't have to have this load create info. You won't have iteration so much and you won't have this or this will be reduced to just like a 
true false kind of thing whether it's loading or not okay so the first part of doing this will have to be like i need to go through uh the process of actually loading a resource to see how it actually operates so i understand how to be able to start working reworking it i want to get a clear understanding of how it works so down to source i need to do two things first i need to find the async callback for so i don't want to throw resource loading calls to another thread i want it to be done in the same thread that calls it and that's basically it isn't it yeah it should be it okay so i have debug resource okay all right so this is loading what resource this is loading 17 which is o oh, by 11 one one so i've got data a resources 11 it's a test collision shape okay let's see in the stack yeah it's loading collision shape okay so p resource 17 has no create info it has a reference count of one all right so we go in we say hey is this atomically expected or I'm looking for expected create info and data because I'm loading the data. Uh, if it already has some of the flags, then it would attempt to load it parallel. That's not what we want. We create the context so that we can, so that way we can throw it onto a different thread. We want to change that up a bit. Right, we go into load into the load uh, resource task. Here we would collect this from a local function, and if we had it, we would just decrement it because this function auto increments it when it returns it if successful. But in this case, we don't have it, so we go okay. Is the local context of the loading flags? include this if yes we need to get it if no then we had to wait for some other thread to give it uh, but we're getting it so what we do we go into the load create info task which is up here because we also have a local function that just loads the create info which is something i want to get rid of we go inside <clears throat> We go into this, which what? This is provided by the pre resource functions. This would be the create info loader that's part of the simulation right now, I think. Uh, yes, simulation, yes. Which would then go into the resource records because it's the developments. All right and return it otherwise it would go through each of the group datas to get resources yeah which would then so this would reach out to files or the remote locations okay we got it there's no old create info is there otherwise it would do a swap the old one would be decremented the new one would be put in okay Okay. We read the load context and we go back to this. Okay. Missed something, didn't I? Oh, it'd go into the load resource task. Going into the load resource task, it would do this. Oh, it went to this, which would be part of simulation where it would ch choose the loader and then actually call the loaders, the loader function to actually load the stuff. Okay. So 
first thing is first. I need to work on removing this, getting rid of the create info from the resource, and this, where I would load the create info directly on a resource. Hmm. Rather, okay, let's focus on this one. <clears throat> Getting resource trade info directly from the resource. So in this case, I'm getting it for DUI. Okay, yeah, we don't want that anymore. Please, Karen, continue. So when we go into the resource list, we go into, let's say, the shader. That doesn't have anything. The armature, we go into create info. It would have stuff down here. Okay. Do I actually need it here? I have the simulation available, which means I can get it from that. Right, I have, in simulation, do I actually have a way to get resource stuff? I do, right? If I can find it. Simulation, include, simulation. Um, yes, I do. I can either get it from this, or I can maybe get it, I have the... Um, Resource records directly available, but that doesn't sound quite as useful right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get it from the simulation instead. I do have the resource ID, right? Yeah, I do have the resource ID, and I'm converting that to the resource here. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do now. Full resource create info equals full null handle. Uh, bow result set uh, result equals because I don't think I actually return anything and I don't have one yet. No, I do not. So this is going to equal foe simulation get source create info e simulation resource ID. And that. And I need to check for if results dot value equals not equals so success or create info equals so null handle. I don't have a good what I don't have a good escape out of here for the results. So I'm just going to set standard abort. So I'll have to be so that I'll have to come back to it. So. Yeah. Implement proper. Okay. <clears throat> There's a number of other locations in here which do the same thing. So we've got that here. Two. Three. And four. Looks like we've got one here for physics, collision in, uh, collision type, right? Yeah, collision shape. Okay. Test, test, simulation. When I'm loading the resource. Oh, right. When... The resource hits the simulation to load the resource. It only gives the resource, and you have to re retrieve it from the... Yeah, no, that's not happening.
Okay. And then we've got one here for the faux armature, so let's do that. Okay, so these cases are cases that I need to... Oh, and the exporter. So, let me make sure that first off, I'm not bra I haven't broken anything yet. So, build faux bring up so that the address sanitizer works as expected. I'm going in, uh, I have what, test collision shape, create info, great. It's working as expected, great. All right. So let me stage that, that, and that. Do I actually need anything from that? Okay, no, this is just for that. Temporary. Okay, close to the right. Resource, get create info. I... And then if not, go to the load, create info, otherwise wait. This... Okay. Oh, and no extra leaks yet. So, what I think is to be done is... I need it for the... Okay, I need to pass... First off, I need to pass the create info here to... The simulation create info so for the moment i'll just pass that in i need to modify this thing of this to pass in info resource create info like that Then I need to, there'll be a change that I have to make in simulation source for this function, which I was actually just looking at originally here, where I say, hey, <clears throat> I've been passed this. the resource create info that's great so you don't pull it out from here you just already have it and you just throw it in here okay this I if I'm not <clears throat> retrieving it out then that means not incrementing it right which means that it'll be left over yes okay so i do that and decrement it so for the moment i have okay i need to increment it create info increment ref count of p resource Create info. Just making sure that the reference counts are correct throughout. Okay, great. Next, load create info task. This will always be performed in here. Why is this a separate task? Because I have that extra function, I have this. Where is this used? if anywhere. It's here, here, and then used in, what is this? Test. Uh, 
Okay. This is just testing create info. Literally importing create info. That's it. That's not a very useful test. So is there anything here? Okay. Trash this. Not useful. Trash this. Not useful. Trash this. Going away. Great. Uh, we can merge these two namespaces. Okay, we're so we're into here. We're into this point. Load create info task. This is only used here now. So this should now go resort v8 info. Is it going to return this? So this is now also going to no longer deal with any of this. So I just need I just need this. This goes away. Simplification. Code removal. So this becomes this instead. So I'm always, every time I'm loading, I'm grabbing it from the simulation because presumably I'm not holding on to it in memory in production. And otherwise, simulation is automatically going to grab it from the create info resource, the, the resource records right now during in, in what I'm going to affectionately call development mode. Or editor, or editor mode, I think I'll call it actually right now. So I have this, if that, it's already incremented part of that. Right? Okay. Great. No new, hold on. No new uh, memory leaks from miscounts of references? No. Okay, great. Great, great, great. So do I actually use this anymore here? Yes, I use it in here. Where is this? When I'm decrementing the ref count, I'm clearing create info. That's no longer going to apply. And then I have down here this. When I get the create info, which I can no longer do because it's no longer part of it. Okay. Right. Where? Whoops. Okay. So I need to. I need to get rid of these locations. So let me kind of back up a little bit. That's still there because I need to get rid of these. Remaining locations, which is internal. That's fine. Uh, test that'll be removed. The exporter, binary and YAML exporter. So what's going on here? I pull it and then I what? I increment it. Okay. What do I have the resource here for? Let me uh, isolate to just that. I literally use it to get the create info. Okay. So in that case, trash that. Trash these. This is descoped down to that level. Great. If this or <clears throat> resource CI equal quo null handle, then standard abort. Yes. And then similarly, let's see, resource, resource, resource. What, what's going on down here? That's just comments. So uh, then I just have to do kind of the same thing here, it looks like. That, that. Um, 
equals full null handle. Okay, we do that. I would suspect that is this get resource create info. We'll do this or this. This would automatically uh, increment it, right? So if I know, whoops, if during the exporter, if I'm no longer incrementing it as part of this. Okay, that's that's a curious thing. If build foe bring up uh whoops. Broke something. Let's discard that. Let's discard that. Uh, bad illegal hardware instruction somewhere. Oh, this. I'm not returning anything when I expect to be load, uh, returning something, right? There we go. Okay. Let me stage this stuff. Back to resource. Great. Search that. Great. Here. <clears throat> okay, let me export a binary. Save as binary use. It's just a terrible thing, so. So here I would save it as this, maybe? Test binary save. Okay. Does that have, I didn't actually test. Save as binary. Um, oh, did I literally not or what? No, I did. If I check what's going on in here. Test binary save is literally not in this directory. 411 bytes. That was not much. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Test. I overwrite it. I end it. Do I have any leaks? No, I do not. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this here. This is the binary side. Yes, it is. Okay. Or It should never happen. If it's a resource that needs to be exported, it should have a C, you know, create info to go along with it. Increment. I'm very curious how this is supposed to work because in my mind, like everything should auto, if you get a reference, it should automatically auto increment. I think this is just a byproduct of some older system I had. I just didn't run through this case before. So we do that, we save as bin oh I hit F5, didn't I? No, I'm no, I don't think I did. Save as binary stop there, so test binary save. We do that, we exit. Really? Really.
Oh, no, sorry. All right. Because there's literally no resources to export in the persistent, right? Yeah, it's only entities. Okay. Can I please export group ID, export resource data for uh, group zero, please? Which will be the data A, please. Why? What's what's going on? Okay, we're in here. We're exporting this resource data. That's great. We go in. Resource set. How many resource indexes are there? Let me guess, there's zero, right? <sighs> right, 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 right. There's no... um. I'm not pulling in that data. Okay. Let me just, I don't know, copy something in. Even if I'm not using it. If I have that, I will... Two, and I'm just going to copy copy that into I need something that doesn't actually have a dependency on anything else like a shader just has a dependency on something like that which I'm not even going to load so this should be fine that one, two, three, one. Make sure it's not going to break. Okay, because we're not lo not loading it. Doesn't actually care. Great, 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 great. Uh, let's see if the debug will actually hit the point that I'm looking for this time. That explains why the binary was just so small. Carry on. Come on. Yes. Okay, we're here. Great, great, great. So we look at uh, this stuff. Presumably it's incremented. We have it. We do this, and then we export some stuff. That's great. And then we leave. Okay, perfect. We have an extra thing. I think that this is the bad thing. 
It's incrementing in an extra thing where it should not be. File save as binary, blah, 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 blah. You exit. We're good again. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what I want. So that there and similarly here. So we scrap that, we get rid of that, we get rid of these two lines or right. Okay. Okay. So this should now be um, finally removable. So I can get rid of the like unload data and unload data. It's just load and unload. That'll be also a nice little neat little trick. So this is just used here. Why? Create properly set. Oh, create properly sets initial state and different type ID values. That's great. And create info is null, but don't care about that. So that goes away. We trash this. Yay. We trash this. Yay. We trash this. E almost. This needs to be changed to the, this. Like that. So the load resource task now pulls that in. I don't need to do this stuff for loading create info like that. It's done all, every time anyways. This reduces to that. Uh, that. This no longer increments because that will do it instead. That means at this point, this is gone. Almost. Uh, yeah, I don't need to clear it anymore. I'm not holding on to it. Oh, but that does mean after I do use it. So this is just gone. And here I do this, I use it. And then I need to Decrement the ref count of create info like that. So yeah, large removals, simplifications of that portion is great. So we do that. We'll bring up, great, we do this, we pull it in, use it, we leave, we have a problem. Keep use after free. Am I not supposed to decrement it? No, because this, whatever this is, is going to actually decrement it because it's using it, right? Yeah. This call. We'll decrement. I think I need to change that up a little bit. Maybe at any point, at any rate, <clears throat> that means right now. So I need to get rid of these things. Fantastic. I don't care about this. This has been changed. This has been changed. This has been changed. I got rid of that. That's no longer there. That's I don't care about this. Okay. So at this point, 
this atomic iteration, do I care about atomic iteration? I may resource unload call. Okay, that's what this was about. This was incremented. This was only used for loading. Okay. <clears throat> I would load it. I would in increase the iterator. And I use this to make sure that I, I only unloaded the one I was expecting to unload. Because it could be done dynamically or in a different thread or at a different time. Because I would call an external system and say, hey, can you unload me? And it may not happen until the next tick, I suppose. Or I may, might have multiple calls to unload. And then I need to make sure I don't accidentally do it at the same time, depending on, like, if... Hmm. Not entirely sure about iteration. I may keep that. But I can definitely change loading to no longer be these flags. I can change it to just be an atomic flag instead, I think. Loading. So this is equals init, atomic flag init, instead. That means this return dot test, I believe. Uh, post load function this dot clear sorry what this or this it doesn't matter it's being set right yeah Okay. And then for this, I just do test and set for, let me check, standard atomic flag returns the value that it is, obtains its previous value. Okay. So if I don't need this, I don't need this. If not this dot test and set. If test and set was true, then that means it's already loading, so don't go in. So that's this. Okay. Otherwise, we can scrap this. We don't need multiple bits of this, do we? I don't think we do. We just need this task context, which is literally just going to be loading flags, or just the resource. In which case I could just pass in the resource, right? At this point. I think so, I can just, just pass that in. Don't need this. Again, it's a simplification. Pass in that. I don't need to free that anymore either. Sure that happens. Great, great. So the flags are down. Get 
These are gone. Ref count, use count, okay. Type. Loaded, oh, loaded create info. Where is this set? I don't need to do this if if I'm not holding on to it. So let me just that. Okay. Scrap this. Okay. When we're passed in the create info, I don't actually need it with me, do I? Mm, I might. Not entirely sure. Then the old create info would become this. So if, okay, I'm not actually using it. Just do this. Just do this. And then remove these. Okay. Now what I'm thinking of is I may still want to have resource create info loaded. Hmm. Uh, keep create info in editor mode. But what I would do instead is I would like put it onto the the P into the next chain rather than actually have like an actual dedicated spot for it here. Yes. Of the data next. Perhaps. Okay. But otherwise, at this point, the loaded create info is gone. To be replaced with that, possibly in the future. Now, atomic flag in it, state. This is still basically working the same. This is still the same. Okay, now. For the more interesting part of this is what do I do about resource types? So let me actually uh, commit what I have. Work in progress. Uh, held. What, uh, okay, the next issue that I'm going to deal with is, if I can find an example, the fact that when I'm loading or creating something like a vertex descriptor, nope, this is the um, GUI stuff, the descriptor loader, what I'm doing is if it doesn't exist, I am creating it around here yeah when i create it i already this is not great because i'm setting the type 
to be the top level type. And I'm and that means like if I have derived types, this system may not be able to recognize it, or other systems that use similar things won't be able able to recognize it. I need to change it so that the type is derived as part of let's say uh, this, so that this these types will have like the you know an S type, and then uh, void star p next a next chain, and then you can follow that you can. Look at that resource, and you can follow its chain down to the point where it would pop, might have like a shader. Like there may be like a more advanced shader type in the future, and that will load both that advanced version and this more simplified version that some older systems can still look at and use, or has some extra like content around it. So. What I want to do then is to focus on moving the 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 type out of here and make it a part of function of well the data for whatever it is. So when I create it, I don't actually provide the type. I just create, and I also kind of want to move away from having to specify the initial size of the resource, especially if it's if it's the incorrect size, because then that kind of screws me in the future. I just want to be able to call something like this that returns it if it ha exists and returns like a generic type that can morph somehow into the final type. But notably, I don't want to have to pass in the type or the size of it. So maybe I can create an intermediate resource type that has uh, an undefined, like a faux resource undefined type undefined, and which would then change into like a, hey, you know, this is a pointer. You know, this will now become a pointer to where the actual resource exists. I think I think okay yeah I think so cool find and so obviously these two functions aren't actually incrementing the reference count on the way out. That is also going to have to change. All right. And I guess, I mean, this is almost an hour. So I guess I'll leave it at that for this session. And next session will be with me actually implementing this fair, fairly interesting rework of the resource types. So until next time, cheers.